this. Um, in commercial terms, they were already developed and perfected, and vacuofluorescent tubes were coming into uh, use, and those would end up being the standard in the 70s for uh, low voltage um, fluorescent sort of displays. So the NIMO, it really just fell through the cracks. Pretty much as soon as it came out, it was already outdated, and so I, you know, I don't know if they were ever really even used, even in military space stuff. I don't think anyone really used it because, you know, faced with all the possibilities of displays you had in 1970 from mixing tubes to pneumatrons to um, mechanical uh, kind of flip counters, you know, projection displays. There were just so many options. But why would anyone decide that, oh, we want to get the one that has the 1,750 volt power supply in it. That's that's what we want for our little gizmo. So um, yeah, I I don't know how to line up the anode uh, and actually hold the whole thing together and have it be snug but not too snug. So um, I designed the holder in AutoCAD and printed it out, um, broke it up into four different parts uh, because uh, in order to get the kind of resolution on all the surfaces that I needed for all the different features. It was really more, most practical to print it in four parts and then bolt it all together. Because um, if you have any experience in 3D printing, you know that the, you really only have a reasonable guarantee of tolerances, the X and Y axis, the Z axis, it's not so accurate. And also, as you, if you have a complex shape like this, um, Printing it in any particular orientation on the printer bed, you'd have a lot of support material and everything, and all that gets in the way of the surfaces and trying to get good tolerances. So this really, uh, this kind of construction really works best if you break it up into sections and print it in sections, then kind of adhere it all together. In this case, I just bolted it. I um, I tapped out. I printed the holes in the uh, center block and I tapped it all out and then just used the number six screws and screwed them in. So it um, worked out really well. The top piece, the anode cover, I added last because the, um, I designed it so that after I soldered a high voltage lead, that I had this um, shroud printed out of PLA that I just glued on with some uh, gel cyanoacrylate glue. Uh, the reason being that you can get glues that, that for acrylic that really weld uh, PLA. But I wanted it to be possibly reversible. So with cyanoacrylate, it'll give a really good bond, but it is reversible. You could put a pair of pliers on there and snap it off if you really wanted to get at the anode again. So um, cyanoacrylate, I, the, the gel type um, has pretty good surface grip, so that's what I use for that. And the rest is, uh, you know, um, a lot of off-the-shelf stuff. I got an off-the-shelf. 2000 volt adjustable DC DC converter high voltage power supply, which worked out really well because, in addition to having the high voltage output, I also have a shutdown feature where I can actually shut down the high voltage. And uh, everything else is still running, the filaments are still on, it just shuts off the high voltage. I can turn it back on. And I also have an adjustment for the um, for the, bright, the for the high voltage output that I can use for brightness control. See, so so on full on, that's about full brightness right there. And, uh, and I'm running it down about you know a little under voltage. So so that's um, yeah, that's pretty much it. If you don't follow me on Twitter, um, I put a lot of the little teasers for this project on Twitter over the past couple of weeks for all the little components, I mean, putting it all together. And um, I, and there's the final component actually is not even uh, here yet. I, I ordered from a local plastic fabricator a, um, a, a heavy acrylic shroud that is going to go on top of here. And I've got some corner pieces and stuff that are printed out, so when that shroud comes, I'm going to put the corner pieces and actually put the shroud on so I can actually put this uh, whole setup on top of my uh, television <laughs> so I can watch the little numbers go around and around later. So, um, so one of the things that they talk about in, uh, in the brochure for the advantage of the NIMO is the viewing angle over the Nixie tube. This is the Nixie, you know, you have all the different elements that are in the stack and some of the ones in the back you really can't see from, from an oblique angle. So. 
if you turn the tube sideways, you can see yeah, it's like it's got good side viewing. You can actually see the numbers at a fairly steep angle, given pretty much just like on the very edge. It's got that wraparound tube thing. So yeah, it's pretty um, it's pretty good on the angle, but one of the problems that I've seen since I've fired this thing up is the great deal of reflectance because um, there are so many different elements in the tube, especially in the front, because there's, you know, the, the thickness of the glass, and then there's a phosphor layer behind that, and so I did notice this uh, reflectivity, or the, you can, if you were, you know, the, looking at the actual number, there's, it's almost, you see a double image, it's not really a, a fact, it's not a, um, an artifact of the camera, I mean, I'm, I'm seeing it here too, and I'm, um, best as I can see is that the double image is caused by the refraction and reflection of the light inside the glass of the actual tube because the, the, the tube glass on the end is pretty thick I think and um, so you're actually seeing the light bouncing part of the light reflecting off the outer surface of the inside of the glass tube and then reflecting back onto the phosphor sort of as a reflected slightly refracted image which sort of a appears as a slightly larger, blurrier image of the number on top of the number. So, um, but yeah, it's, uh, it's very hard to photograph too because the number is very bright and the tube is not. So, um, if I turn it down, like, I'm going to really make it dim here. Yeah. It doesn't really help with the view. For some reason, I'm not really picking up the uh, color. I think it's because the auto color correction because the lighting up here is kind of uh, beige-ish, but it is a, a bright phosphor green. It's not really blue like it's appearing in my monitor. Um, yeah, there you go. I'm just, I'm really pleased it all came together. Um, if you ever do run into a uh, uh, a Nemo tube of any configuration, uh, you should definitely uh, snatch it up because, um, yeah, they are pretty amazing forgotten pieces of technological history, no doubt about that. So, so anyway, let's go and uh, look at the theory of operation for the Nemo. Okay, so this is a printout of that. Of that catalog that's available online, and you can Google it and find it yourself. Um, this is the thing that really surprised me, is the, um, the catalog, this is from, it's dated 1969, it has the single digit, and then it also has this six uh, digit, and also a four digit version, and um, I think they even, uh, I saw an example of uh, even a 64 element version that they had uh, made at least uh, small runs of. But I've never seen these in operation. I've never seen like uh, examples of these. So whether they actually made them, whether they were just prototyped and never really uh, developed into actual products, I really don't know. But um, right at the start, um, in their brochure, they're showcasing the advantages of the Nimo over the Nixie tube for you know the the cloudiness of the image. Although with, you know in practice, the Nimo does have its own uh, artifacts. So with Reflectance and, re and uh, refractance. Is that refractance? Is that a word? It should be. Because there is reflectance, so I guess there should be refractance. I, mean, I have to look it up. Maybe it's not grammatically correct, but you know. And here, the side viewing angle, which I just showed that you know you can view it from a side angle, which is true, very true. Um, and uh, they also had uh, some versions of the Nimo. This is the other advantage. I guess to uh, over next tubes was that because of the phosphor, they they had.